Hello, YouTube. We're getting a red alert on NVIDIA. Last time it was a trap. Is this time different? We're going to go through and try to understand exactly what is happening on NVIDIA or our current stock market leader. This is very important because we already have Apple in a failed breakout on the annual. We're back below 183 and 182, which are the 2022 and 2021 highs. To kick off the show, we're going to talk about how short sellers are making $13 billion in profit betting against small cap stocks or the Russell. Let's read one sentence to make this nice and clear because we're going to extrapolate this out to big tech. So stay tuned. We've got a great show for you today. Uh, Morgan Stanley's Mike Wilson, who has been predicting a stock market decline, he's been wrong so far, has similarly warned investors to stay away from small cap stocks whose profit margins are mostly highly at risk of being eroded by inflation. Looking at the heat map today, you wouldn't know there was anything negative. It actually looks positive for Meta, for Amazon, and for Tesla. We're going to go through all that, including some chart charts at the end. So please make sure you stay tuned. But here we go. Uh, Tesla shares up 10% on Morgan Stanley upgrade, but this is the problem. We talked about this on the weekend. So reality is creeping in on the NASDAQ's year-long dream rally. Note what we just looked at. NASDAQ 100 drops as Apple and NVIDIA see second worst falls. We're going to talk about Apple in a moment. But first, we're going to go down and look at one chart and one chart only. We focus it, focused on this on the prop. Uh, sorry. We focused on this chart on the weekend. Have a look here. We noted the profit from the small cap stocks is the reason why it's tanking. And right now, the big five profit does not look all that good, actually going down into negative. So without share buybacks for stock like Apple, it hasn't really gone anywhere. So those problems we're seeing with small caps could be feeding through to large caps too. Technically speaking, we already have a very critical area. Apple is also below its 50 DMA for four days in a row. But uh, by looking just at the surface area, it doesn't look all that bad. We have to look under the hood to really know what's happening here. So that's our goal for today. Um, I'm going to ask you for a huge favor. Before we go further, if you don't mind, please consider smashing that thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. I would really, really appreciate that. We put out stock market videos every single day, and we really appreciate your support. So Apple is going to be kicking things off tomorrow. Apple usually sells off into an event. I'm not sure if they're going to say we got something else tomorrow. That's usually what the market likes. We're expecting a new uh, iPhone 15, expecting upgrades to the Apple Watch, maybe even Vision Pro. I don't know what else we're going to talk about. So that's the real focus for tomorrow, coming in at 1, 1 p.m. Eastern or 10, 10 p.m. Pacific. Um, going into this as well, we hear that maybe Apple is having a harder time than we think. Apple renews Qualcomm deal and sign its own modem chip isn't ready. Oh, no. Right. That's not good. The iPhone maker has been trying to create its own comp components for a while. They phased out Intel. It does not look like they can phase out Qualcomm because they've signed a new deal to cover smartphone launches in 24, 25, and 26. So all eyes will be on Apple tomorrow. Why? Well, as we know, we got one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Each year getting a little bit worse. Each year being worse so far here. We don't see that massive 10% drop. That's what we reviewed on the weekend. So yes, at the surface, things look good. Let's be mindful that we're going into the second half of the month, though, and if the seasonality chart did not play out for the first half of the month where we've just gone down, is it going to play out for the second half where we go down more? Um, that would not be good, right? That would not be good. When leaders are no longer leading, we have to make sure we're aware of that. Fear and greed is still solidly in neutral, even though it's up by one point versus yesterday. With the market up 0.6% uh, for uh, S&P and over 1% for the NASDAQ, I would have expected these stocks to do better today. Um, they didn't do bad. They reclaimed the 50-day moving average after spending three days below. I am not sure that's enough. We still have an upside gap, even though we filled the lower one. So we'll go back to the charts of the later part of the show. Um, finishing off, two more uh, headlines here, just to make sure we round it out. This one's a little bit older. I've been wanting to talk about it. I just couldn't jam it into a video. So here we go. We're doing it today. Zillow offers 1% down to lure struggling home buyers. Oh, that's a, that's a sign of a healthy market. That's a sign of a good economy. Yes. I'm joking, by the way, if that's not clear. Let's read one more here. This one's a doozy. It starts with the letter T. 7.6 trillion of U.S. government debt will mature in the next year, adding pressure on rates. And uh, why does this matter? Well, it really ma matters because we looked at that graph before. And uh, this one here, let me just see if I can find it really fast here. Let's pull up that same article again. Why? Hey, this article is typed up pretty good. I like what they said. We looked at the graphs. Oh, no. The relationship between tech and the bonds, meaning what? The 10-year treasury note. 
something is happening here which doesn't normally happen uh when the when the red line goes down the black line goes up same thing happened here we get a little bit of a chop it goes up we go down but now for some reason they're both going up together this is defying logic it's defying gravity i'm not sure which one's gonna break maybe it's just time we talked about that debt wall hitting in 2024 and 2025 uh, this is a pretty scary headline. Um, I'm not going to lie. This one is not good. So at the surface area, things appear like they're just fine. They're hunky-dory. I am not quite convinced yet. I'm looking for this one extra graph here. Here we go. So maybe maybe it's 2007. This is going to be a day of reckoning next year, like in uh, 2008. But as of right now, we have a $2 trillion corporate debt wall, which could spark job losses in 2024 per Goldman Sachs. And then the government, another 7.7.6, .7 which means... Nearly $10 trillion. This is so much money. It represents 31% of all outstanding U.S. debt, adding upward pressure on rates. So remembering that article we just looked at, this one right here, rem remembering the relationship between these different stocks, the biggest stock reporting something tomorrow. Uh, that seems like kind of really important. It seems like really, 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 really important. Let's have a look at that 10-year note. Why? It's so close to breaking out. Um, it's actually already poked over 4.33. And as a reminder, we talked about this before. This was our crash signal where in uh, 2018, in 2022, and maybe in 2023, every single time now this is corresponded to a massive drop. We have a look here at SPX. Uh, the same thing happened here. Um, let me make sure I got the right chart here. So let's go to a one week chart. And uh, yeah, we look back here to 2018. So this big, nice, nasty drop right here that happens with that W. The W happened here. And now it's happening again here. This is the chart we looked at on the weekend. So please make sure to stay tuned until the end if you want to see that one. Um, but that's like that's like not good. So I don't want to overstress it just because, hey, if you care, you're going to dig a little bit deeper. If you don't care, then like, who cares what I have to say? I'm just some guy on YouTube. Let's have a look and see what's happening here. Why? Well, we got Bitcoin. Bitcoin's usually been a leading indicator. We got a death cross and we got a pretty notable decline. I'm looking for a fade into the second half of the week, which means... Hey, I'm happy we're getting the rip. It's kind of what I was expecting. I think, again, not I know, but I think we're going to be getting a sour reaction on that inflation report. Um, we looked at a little bit, uh, sorry, we looked at uh, last week. And uh, the reason why I'm looking for this is because um, we know that uh, we got this uh, CPI print coming out on uh, Wednesday. Let's have a look here. So for this week, it's CPI. We talked about this on the weekend. So again, please stay tuned. Tell me if you want to see that. Uh, of course, sorry, CPI is expected to go up from 0 0.2 to 0 0.6 and 3.2 to 3.6. This is not good. And I know I keep saying it's not good. It's just that, again, at the surface, you're not going to notice this. So stocks generally take the staircase up and the elevator down. I see all of the warning signs for us to, for us to take that elevator down. It might take more time or I might just be wrong. So please make sure to drop me a comment and tell me what you think. Ether down even more. It's down by 4.5% on the week and on the day. Here's where it's got, it's a little bit even more tricky. We looked at the heat map before, uh, looking up to the last one month. Energy is doing good, right? Energy has been doing pretty good for the last uh, last month, for the last week. So that's what's adding some pressure to the potential for that CPI print coming out, where um, that's what's a large part of, a large, large component of CPI is, I is. It's, uh, it's energy, which means gas. And then if we have a look here at the last graph from this article here, the reason why this matters is because 80% of funds that represent June are overweight Amazon, Microsoft, and NVIDIA. What could that mean? A rush for the exit if they decide to go what? Underweight, God forbid. If they go from overweight to underweight, man, they're going to be rushing for the exit. There's going to be a drill, and it's going to go a lot lower. So um, oil right now is already a little bit uh, a little bit of a warning here. We know we're going higher, um, notably over the last uh, roughly month, sorry, a couple of months. And then copper is trying to stage a move too. Uh, China is attempting to make some uh, some changes to their property sector. And uh, it's catching a bid for copper. So those two things are going to really drive inflation right now. All right, let's have a look at a couple more quick charts because I don't want to be doom and gloom only. I want to look at some positivity too. So if we have a look here and understand that uh, SPY is up by about 0.6%, that's almost equally offset with the dollar. So it's really important to watch what's happening with the dollar. I know that might, this might seem a little bit mundane, a little bit uh, granular, right? Too fine in the details, in the weeds, but this really matters. Why? Because what the dollar does, the opposite uh, happens to the S&P. So if you're like, oh my God, S&P is so great, so silky smooth, so fantastic. It's actually a weak dollar. That's what's causing it. So the weak dollar actually drove stocks up. Um, QQQ just decided to go for it on the Tesla news. And 
Tesla is now back above its 50 DMA, dragging multiple stocks back over, including S&P, including uh, QQQ, including, uh, let's have a look here through our 50 DMA test. So looking through here, um, we got uh, S&P back above for one day. Two days would be a trend. Let's look and see if we can get a second one here. QQQ, uh, one back above. Same note. After Apple, what's going to happen? SMH, three days below. So if chips lead tech and tech leads spy, uh, this doesn't look good. Um, it could be a trap, but it does look like we're actually losing momentum because we're forming lower highs and lower lows. All we got to do is actually break down. We could be setting up to form some kind of a W or a double bottom to go back up to go to the high. I'm just not sure. NVIDIA, first daily candle closed below. It's not by a lot, um, but what I would note is that previous ones have been traps. Even on three days below, it was still a trap. We still went higher. Uh, even happened back here. So if we spend a, a, a significant amount of time below the 50 and we don't automatically rebound, I would assume, again, assume that we're going to be going lower. Apple, uh, four days below. Man, it better get inside that gap zone. It still has to fill, fill its upper one here, getting back up to 180s. So I need to see Apple lead. It's the largest stock, and it's currently in that failed break. I don't like this at all. Um, Tesla, bullish, right? I uh, decided to take that uptrend, and it pumped up. Thank you, Morgan Stanley. We appreciate your pumps. FXI still below. Not looking good. Uh, Microsoft, two days back above, and it's back above that 2022 high. Nice. Going to get back above the 2021 high at roughly 350. That'll be the next target or about 10 bucks higher. Let's see if it can do it. ARC, uh, flirting with the 50 MA here. That would be a very positive sign for the bulls. DAX, still below. So it's only America, which looks bullish right now. Canada or XIU, below. We go to the rest of the world, emerging markets, below, but trying to say to come back after that uh, G20 summit happening in India. We have a look here at the Nikkei, bouncing out the 50. This one looks fine. Nikkei is changing its, uh, its, its tone. Uh, Ethereum looks terrible. New, uh, new low. Uh, we've not seen an area this low going back to March. That's, that's, that's a nice cut. Bitcoin just barely holding on to 25K here. If it doesn't hold, uh, we could, it could be heading back down to 20K. That would not be nice. Um, and there you go. That rounds out all the different stocks we were looking at. What I want to be extremely mindful of going into the rest of the week now is just that we're looking for an inside bar break. So we now have two inside bars, which just means that whichever way this, this candle decides to break, honestly, I'm not sure which way it's going to go. I have an inclination. I have a, a thesis, but I'm ready to admit I'm wrong. I don't know which way it's going to go. I think it's going to be lower by the end of the week. But a double inside bar with a reducing volume means that there's a coil getting really tight. The coil gets tight. It's either going to explode to the downside or it's going to explode to the upside. Honestly, I just don't know. So I'd rather, I'd rather wait for that break. I'd rather see S&P back above 451.77, which is the key Fibonacci area. But right now, QQQ is already leading with that. Look at the open on the week, 375.66. It's the exact mathematical number we're looking at. So if the robots know the number, you better make sure you know what that number is. You don't want to be caught with your pants down when the market takes that elevator down. And uh, one more time, why does this matter? Because um, the possibility we could go higher is not going to happen until we form uh, a higher high. We cannot advance the chart until we form a higher high. It's that simple. And as of right now, we don't. We got high, lower high, lower high, lower high, higher high, lower high, lower high. So ever since we formed a 52-week high, there's only been one time we actually printed a higher, higher high. As of right now, we have four higher lows, which means we are playing defense, but the bulls are not playing offense because we do not have that higher high yet. I still think we could go, we could fall down 10% uh, off our relative high to hit that 50 weekly moving average at about uh, 413 when it curls up a little bit more, currently at about 412. Give it, an, give it another one or two candles and we'll likely be there. And also our 200 day moving average currently at 416.33. Converging or both those numbers meeting around the same area would mean that if we do crash land on strong support, that's probably a dip you want to buy. This was not a dip for me. That, that, that was a, that was, it was a dip, but it's not a correction. I want a correction to buy. We come down to here. I'll be looking to buy for that Santa Claus rally coming to town. Thank you for tuning in. If you want to watch more, our weekend deep dives now queued up here on the left-hand side. If not, thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you again.